Hey guys, it's Matthew here from Hearing Tracker, keeping you up to date with all things hearing related. Today, I'm doing a full feature review on Sony's new CREC10 over the counter hearing aids to help you to figure out whether or not they're worth the $1,000 price tag. So, back in October of last year, we saw the release of Sony's first ever over the counter hearing aids, which are a new wave of hearing technology that we're seeing in the US at the moment. This follows on from the FDA's ruling on OTC hearing aids. This ruling stated that as of the 17th of October 2022, any tech company can technically sell a product labeled as an OTC hearing aid directly to the public without the need for you to see an audiologist beforehand. If you're watching this and you're just starting to look into hearing aids, this might not seem like a big deal. But before then, you would have to head over to see an audiologist such as myself. I would assess your hearing, diagnose your hearing loss, and then recommend the most appropriate type of hearing aid for you and your ears. Now, there's nothing wrong with this process, and it does work very well. However, there are a ton of people out there that simply choose not to do it. Guess how many people that might be? The figure stands at just under 30 million people in the US alone that suffer with a hearing loss, but for one reason or another, choose not to wear a hearing aid. This new wave of technology is designed to be a way of introducing you easily to managing your hearing loss by buying it either online or over the counter and setting it up yourself at home. Of course, there are both pros and cons to this type of technology, which I'll cover in today's video. But the main point of today is to show you these. You've probably heard of Sony. Well, they've collaborated with WS Audiology, who are cemented in the hearing aid world, owning brands such as Widex, Signia, and Hear USA. Now, I'm pretty sure that they must have been waiting on the sidelines for this FDA announcement, as they were pretty quick off the mark with their release of not only one, but two over-the-counter hearing aids. Today, I'm covering the CRE C10, and this video is technically part one of a two-part series. In the second part, which you'll see soon, I'll be covering Sony's other OTC hearing aid, the Sony CRE E10, which is Sony's fully loaded, rechargeable, directional, and Bluetooth over-the-counter hearing aid. Of course, wait until you finish watching this review before you disappear and watch the other one, as there are some unique features to both of these hearing aids. While we get started here, I would love to know what's the most important to you guys out there watching today. Discretion or functions such as Bluetooth streaming, rechargeability or directionality. Can you let me know in the comments beneath this video? The Sony CRE C10 is Sony's first offering in the OTC race, and it has a similar shape and size to previous tech that we've seen from WS Audiology. I think this is a pretty smart move from them as they know that this design works and it fits in a range of ears, which is even more important if you guys at home are going to be fitting them to yourself. The CRE C10s are designed for those with a perceived mild to moderate hearing loss and there's a simple and easy setup process using their Sony hearing control app. This allows you to test your hearing using the devices themselves, so there's technically no need for you to get a hearing test with an audiologist before buying them. Although I personally wouldn't actually recommend that as you don't actually know if they're suitable or not for you unless you've had your hearing tested. But I'll show you more of this process later on in today's video. Unboxing the devices, they come in a simple box with the standard things that come with most earbuds or over-the-counter hearing aids. Starting with a variety of sleeves to get a decent fit with your ear. I'm just going to interrupt myself here. Whilst we're on the subject of these sleeves, these really do have a huge impact on the way that these devices can sound. If they're too tight in your ear, then you'll suffer with what we call the occlusion effect, which is the feeling that you've got your fingers stuck in your ears. If they're too loose on the other hand, then there are a few different things that could also happen. So you may well lack a little bit of depth. They may well not cope as well in background noise and they could also feed back. So there's definitely a delicate balance to getting the fitting right. Okay, so back over to the unboxing now. You'll see here that the rest of the kit includes the warranty paperwork. Here we've got some size 10 batteries. Yep. You're right, these are battery powered and they need to be changed roughly every three to five days, which is the same as any discrete traditional invisible in canal hearing aid. If you're not into batteries and rechargeability is something that's really important to you, Sony do have the CRE E10s, which will give you a full day of battery life per charge, but that does come at the cost of discretions. So if cosmetics is really important to you, then these really are a solid option as when you insert them into your ears, there isn't a great deal to see at all. Okay, so we've got a couple more things in the box here. We've got the cleaning cloth. Here's a brush for cleaning the hearing aids. And then we've got a carry case, which I actually think could potentially be a little bit smaller, as at this size, you'd always know that it was in your pocket. The good thing is, I suppose, it does give you some space to keep batteries inside as well, though. 
So if we actually take a look at the devices themselves, they're torpedo shaped for an easy insertion. They do feel well built. And if I'm honest with you, there's not really much to them, but I guess there doesn't really need to be. The pre-installed small interchangeable sleeve sits on one end, which is nice and soft and comfortable when you insert it into your ear. I personally take a small sleeve in my ears, but they have four different sizes available. And based on my experience in clinic, the devices should be suitable for most ears. I only really run into problems with very, very tiny ears, which would potentially just not fit at all or be uncomfortable. Taking you over to the outside here, you can see the extraction cord, which is there so you can take the thing out of your ear. Now don't, and I repeat, don't cut this off. Otherwise you've potentially got a very expensive piece of equipment stuck in your ear canal. There's a single microphone just here, and then finally you've got the battery door, which again, most people tend to be fine with opening and closing. But if you do have dexterity issues, then you may want to look at the rechargeable version of this hearing aid as there's less fiddling to do. So I've got one question which I know is on all of your lips. Who exactly are these designed for? Sony state that these are designed for anyone with a perceived mild to moderate hearing loss who feel that they're technically capable of setting up OTC hearing aids for themselves. In my opinion, these will bridge the gap between people not wearing any technology in their ears at all to one day wearing a set of prescription hearing aids fitted by an audiologist. Okay, so let's put this in my ear then. There is a little bit of a knack to this, but of course, I do this all day every day. I do teach patients to do this all day every day as well, and sometimes it can take two minutes, sometimes it can take 30 minutes. It really depends on the individual. Really, as a rule of thumb, if you do have any dexterity issues, then of course you need to think about changing the batteries and putting these things in because they are a little smaller than Sony's other offering. Here we go. Pretty simple. So comfort wise, of course I can feel it in my ear, but from the experience that I've had with traditional hearing aids, I can tell you that if the fitting is right for you, then over a period of time, you should forget that you've got it in your ear. Being the size that they are, they'll fit in most ears. And if you have a good look now, you'll see that they're pretty discreet. So as I mentioned earlier, if discretion is key for you, here's how tucked away they're likely to seem. Before you get to the stage of wearing them, you'll need to, of course, set them up and tailor them to your specific hearing loss, which is actually one of the criteria that brings them into the FDA's OTC realm. This is all done via the Sony Hearing Control app, which is both iOS and Android compatible. The setup process is really simple and the app walks you through the entire experience. I already have a video out there covering how to set up these devices from scratch. So check it out after you've watched this video if you're doing a thorough amount of research so you know exactly what's in store if you're looking at buying these hearing devices. The setup process is a little different to the way that other OTC hearing aid manufacturers allow you to personalize this hearing technology. And it involves listening to a series of beeps and then on your smartphone, you need to select the number of beeps that you hear. When you're going through this process, make sure that it's done in a nice, quiet listening situation. Otherwise, you'll potentially end up with hearing aids set incorrectly for your hearing loss. So I can't stress enough that it's super important to follow the in-app instructions to the letter. Depending on how you get along, the process can take anything from 5 to 10 minutes. So it's pretty quick and worth taking your time for the most accurate results. After you're done, the algorithm then determines the best predetermined settings for you based on thousands of similar hearing losses. Sony have got a pretty neat feature that kicks in here if your hearing loss is either asymmetric, so if it's worse in one ear than the other, or if your hearing loss falls outside of the criteria of OTC hearing aids being suitable, and it recommends that you go and get your hearing properly assessed. For me, this is actually so important, and in fact, it's something that I flagged up as being a cause for concern with OTC hearing aids. Could OTC devices put you at risk of improperly treating your hearing loss and without a proper assessment from a hearing care professional, could that potentially miss a serious health issue? As my concern was that by removing an audiologist from the assessment process, there would potentially be both audiological and non-audiological red flags that wouldn't be picked up. While this won't identify all of them, at least it shows some initiative from one of the OTC manufacturers. Well done WSA and Sony. To start off with, the app prompts you to choose a level which sounds comfortable for you. This is because at first it's likely that they'll be a little bit too loud, which is perfectly normal and to be expected. The app also provides you with a few manual adjustments that you can play with, such as the volume and tone, which Sony calls sound balance. This is pretty neat and it allows you to add a greater amount of higher tones and make the sound sharper and clearer, or alternatively you can reduce them to make it sound a little bit more mellow. The other Sony OTC hearing aid, the CRE E10, also gives you more control in the app, 
allowing you to adjust the directionality, i.e. whether the hearing aids are picking up sound in front of you or from behind. However, as the CRE C10s that we're discussing today only have a single microphone, they don't have that functionality. Saying that, I'm impressed that Sony haven't just left it there though with the single microphone. Due to their ear-to-ear -ear wireless connectivity, this does narrow the polar plot, meaning that in combination with what we call the pinner effect, i.e. the shape of this part of your ears, Sony are claiming that they're able to focus more on what's in front of you. So what's it like to use them then? Like I say, comfort-wise, they don't really bother me. And the thing about the sound is that, as with any hearing aids, prescription or OTC, when they're first in your ears, it's likely that they'll sound quite strange. They're likely to sound quite loud, possibly quite sharp and tinny, and there may well be a bit of a boominess or an echo there as well. And that depends on the extent of your hearing loss and exactly how long you've had it for. So to overcome this, Sony have got a particularly clever feature which looks at providing you with a list of potential complaints that you might have, and that goes from your own voice to hearing speech or the sound quality, and then it provides you with a list of different solutions that you can choose from. I think that's a pretty smart move from Sony as you don't necessarily have the backup from an audiologist to help you out with that. Then over time and with continual use, the unnatural sound that you first get when you start wearing a hearing aid will start to lessen and become more and more normal by the day. And the key to you being successful with any of these devices is consistency and wearing them as often as you can. This is why, if I'm honest, I'm not particularly keen on some of the OTC and PSAP devices out there advertising themselves as tech that can be used for situational use, which essentially means you can use them as and when you want. Audiology doesn't quite work like that. You need to build up your tolerance to get used to this new way of listening. So if there's one take home message from today's video, although I do hope there's more than one, but one really important one is that you should be wearing these devices as often as you can to get the best out of them and also to get the best out of your ears. So bearing in mind that these are Sony's first attempt at an OTC hearing aid, what do I think is missing? Or more importantly, what do I think that you should know before buying them? First of all, be aware that there's no Bluetooth in these hearing aids, which means you can't stream phone calls or media to them. However, like I mentioned earlier, that's intentional and what allows them to be the size that they are. Plus, Sony's workaround is that you can always opt for the CRE E10 model instead. Secondly, whilst they allow you to have some control over the settings, i.e. the volume or sound balance, that's pretty much it. There are some other OTC hearing aids out there that do have different programs for different situations. You could argue at the same time that that also means there's less fiddling around for you to do and so it could be a positive at the same time. One thing that's really impressed me is what's going on behind the scenes at Sony HQ when it comes to making sure you've got as much support as possible with these devices. It delights me that Sony actually recognised that audiologists are a very important component when it comes to hearing aid fittings and understanding that they've got a team in place at Sony's OTC HQ. Firstly, making a plethora of support videos to guide you through all processes such as changing the batteries to cleaning the hearing aids. And then secondly, they have a tier one support team who help you with the setup process. And then thirdly, a tier two team which is made up of audiologists to help with specific audiological challenges that you might have. One big question is, do they solve the hearing aid price dilemma? $1,000 is still quite a lot of money in my opinion. There's no question of that. Is it as much as a traditional set of prescription hearing aids that are fitted by an audiologist? Of course not. But saying that you do get full audiological support when you do buy a hearing aid through an audiologist. I know that from my discussions with Sony's OTC team, they're trying to get more audiologists on board to sell these hearing aids and provide ongoing support where it's needed. I'm actually really curious to know if you're an audiologist watching this today, would you be interested in providing that support? And if you're someone keen on wearing OTC hearing aids, do you think you would need it? Drop me a note on that in the comments beneath this video. So where can you buy them, I hear you cry? There are a couple of different options. Firstly, directly from Sony, and I'll post a link in the description to this video. Secondly, WS Audiology state that they're hoping that they'll be available through their audiology network in the US as time goes on. Technically, they are available through Widex, Signia, and Hear USA providers, but they're not available across the board just yet. Plus, so I understand, you can also find them on True Hearing and Hear.com. Now, if you're not completely exhausted by me just yet, then check out this other feature review of the Sony CRE E10s, as there are some big differences between these two models. Alternatively, you can check out this other hearing tech review video as well.